Hi, I'm Christine Benz from Morningstar.com. With the new tax laws going into effect for 2018, many retirees are wondering how that might affect their tax bills. Joining me to discuss that topic is Tim Steffen. He's Director of Advanced Planning for Baird Private Wealth Management. Tim, thank you so much for being here. Thanks, Christine. The topic I'd like to cover today is retiree taxes, and there is a lot that's changing starting in 2018. First, let's discuss kind of an overarching principle for thinking about tax payments throughout sure. the year. How should uh, investors approach that question? Sure. So the, the the general theme we try to encourage with investors and, and taxpayers is uh, and. Uh, when you're figuring out how much to pay during the course of the year, you want to pay just enough tax during the year to avoid getting hit with an underpayment penalty. You don't want the IRS to penalize you for paying too little, but you don't want to pay all your taxes up front. You want to maintain the use of that cash for as long as you can. So you pay just enough to avoid the penalty and then plan to have a balance due when you file your tax return in April. You know, a lot of people don't like to do that. They don't like writing that check at the end of the year. They prefer to get the refund. But that's really a, a you're making an interest-free loan to the government when you do that. And I think when people think of it that way, they think, no, oh, you're right. I'd rather maintain the use of my money. So in general, you want to pay as little as you have to during the year and then write the check in April. Okay. So one of the ways that taxpayers try to figure out, well, how much will I owe for a given year is to look back to the previous right. year. So we have a big change in terms mm -hmm. of the tax laws starting in 2018. So what are the perils of using your 2017 return, sure. what you paid in 2017, to determine how much you should be paying throughout 2018? So as you said, one of the ways that people look at how much do I have to pay in to avoid that penalty, what's that target I have to hit, is there's a couple different things you can look at. One is paying in off of last year's tax liability, and one is paying off of current year tax liability. The easy thing is to pay off what you paid last year. Right. Uh, for most people, that's 100% of your prior year tax liability, and that's not the, the balance due in April. That's the total taxes you paid during the year. That either 100% of that, some people with higher income levels have to shoot at 110%, um, but that's a, at least that's a fixed number. So it's really easy. You just you, you know what that number is. You just take that number, divide it by four, and you make payments during the course of the year, something like that. Um, the problem with that this year is we've got this tax reform hanging out there. Right. And you know, there's a lot of changes happening in 2018. And, and while not everybody is going to see lower tax liabilities in, 27, or in 2018, the studies are showing that the vast majority of people will, as upwards as maybe 80% of taxpayers, mm -hmm. will pay less in 2018 than they did in 2017, all things being equal. So for those taxpayers who are going to see a fall in their tax liability this year, paying payments during the course of this year based off of last year's liability may not be very appropriate. It may not be the best use of your cash during the year. Okay. So you might end up with a, with a refund, which, it, as you talked about at the outset, that's not an optimal use of your use of your funds. We like getting the check, but it's really not the best use of your funds to give the IRS the, the check earlier. Okay. So in terms of the logistics of um, paying those taxes, if you're retired, you can either take withholding from your IRA distributions from your Social Security payments. Mm -hmm. or you can pay quarterly throughout the year. Yeah. How do you come down on that question sure. for retirees? So once you've figured out what your target is for the year, how much you have to have paid in by the end of the year, you're right, there's a, you've got a few options. You can either have that withheld from certain income payments that you get during the year, or you can make estimated payments. Not all income from a retiree is subject to withholding. So you can, uh, Social Security benefits, you can have taxes withheld right. on. You can have your advisor withhold on IRA payments uh, or a pension payment you might get from an employer, or maybe even deferred comp payments. But things like investment income typically isn't subject to withholding, so capital gains, dividends, interest, that kind of thing. Or if you've got some income coming from a rental property or business like that, you're not going to have withholding on that either. So in those cases, you either have to have more withholding taken from the other income or supplement that withholding with estimated payments. And so you've got to decide which one is, is easier, more convenient and, and, and for you. And, and there's pros and cons to both of those. Yeah. The, the withholding is really easy because you just you tell somebody else, take this amount out of my check. I don't even want to see it. By the time you get it, it's not a withholding. You don't have to worry about paying the taxes. But you're paying that throughout the course of the year, and you're not you're not getting to keep that money for as long as you possibly So you're kind can. of prepaying. If you take your distribution at the beginning of the year, you, right. you're taking the whole tax out straight away. Exactly. For those who take an RMD, for example, right in, in January, yeah. they're paying all that tax up front. If you wait till December, you're paying it right at the end of the year, which may be better. You get to use your cash a little longer to keep it invested. But then you've also got the issue of you, know, you have to pay some tax during the course of the year, too. So especially for those items that aren't withheld on. So that's where we get into the idea of estimated payments. And so while withholding is easy, estimated payments actually give you a better use of your funds in many cases. So if you've got large investment income, uh, rental property income, something like that, you may have to make a quarterly payment during the year. And so uh, that gets you the, to keep the use of your cash a little longer, but you also have to remember to make the payment. Right. And if you forget, 
you know, you can always pay it late, but the IRS is going to charge you interest from that due date going forward. Okay, so put it on your calendar. Exactly. Um, let's talk about retirees who, for one reason or another, end up with some big infusion of cash yeah. into their, re their retirement plan and, and kind of managing the taxes around yeah. those big payouts. Um, how should they approach that? And so, as we said before, you can pay your taxes based off of your prior year tax right. liability. So, let's say you're a retiree who's plugging along and maybe you're in your 60s or so and you come up on RMD age and all of a sudden your income jumps up because now you have to take these required minimum distributions. So the question is, do you pay the taxes on those RMDs right away or can you wait to pay those the next year? And again, if you're paying off of prior year taxes you're, and you have a spike in income, mm -hmm. you can wait to pay the taxes on that spike until you file your tax return. Same thing goes for retirees who maybe realize a big capital gain from the sale of some stock or a property or something like that. Um, yes, the gain is taxable, but you don't necessarily have to pay the taxes on that right away. You can wait until you file your tax return. As long as you hit that prior year tax liability target, that 100% of prior year, you'll be okay in, in terms of avoiding a penalty. Okay, so that might result in me underpaying, but the benefit is that I would just pay later on as but, opposed to paying r right off the bat. And you might not even be underpaid in terms of penalty calculations. As long as you've got withholding or something else for your other payments that hits that 100% target of last year, this year you can wait to pay that extra tax when you file your return. Okay. Now that may flip itself in that third year when your income comes back down to a normal level. You don't want to pay in based off of that high income year. Then you've got to be more careful about how your payments are done. Then you've got this this other target you can shoot for, which is 90% of your current year liability. If you can hit that, you know, in, so in the, the down year, you've had the big income spike one year, the next year income's more level. Right. Uh, now you're hitting 90% of that liability, that target liability each year. And that's, you got to be a little more careful with that because it requires a more exact calculation. Okay. Let's talk briefly about RMDs, required minimum distributions. Obviously a huge topic, but how can I think about managing my tax burden relative sure. to my RMDs? So some people take their RMDs at the beginning of the year right. if, and, and you can have withholding taken out there. That may be a bit of an early prepayment of your taxes. You don't necessarily have to do that. Other people will let the IR RMDs wait till the end of the year. Leave it in the retirement account as long as possible as much tax for growth as you right. can. Then you take it out in, say, November or December, and you have taxes withheld from there. The fear from there that some folks might have is that, well, if I don't pay my taxes till the end of the year, am I going to get penalized for being underpaid in the beginning of the year? And one of the quirks in this whole penalty calculation thing is that withholding is automatically considered paid evenly throughout the year. Okay, that's good to Even know. Even if you pay it at the very end of the year. So if you wait to have an RMD in December and you have it all withheld on then, the IRS won't care that it happened in December. They'll treat it as if it happened evenly throughout the year. So that can be a way for somebody who's maybe behind on their tax payments a little bit, take a little extra out of the IRA, have it withheld on. The IRS doesn't really care when you take it. They treat it as if it came throughout the year. So you, it's a way to catch up for those who maybe fall behind a little bit. So all of this suggests to me that one should get some help in these matters rather than just trying to go it alone, um, although you may get yeah. the help from some tax prep software. Sure, yeah. Certainly in the first few years as you're dealing with this, once you get into, you know, retirees tend to get into a routine. Income tends to be pretty consistent from year to year. You kind of get a handle of, of what your liability is going to be and how much to pay in. Unless you get something like this year where, you know, with, again, with tax Big rates changes. having fallen, yeah, right. um, your income may stay the same, but your taxes might fall. Right. So if you're paying in off of last year's income, you may find yourself, again, overpaid, as we said before. Okay. Um, last thing, Tim, is how, how state taxes fit into all of this. We've yeah. been talking about federal taxes, but what are the differences yeah. with state taxes? So the first thing is, you know, not all states have these big radical changes like we've seen on the federal mm -hmm. side. So while federal tax liabilities may be down, state tax liabilities, they might actually be up in some cases because uh, while states have lost some of the deductions that we claim on the federal side, they haven't lowered their tax rates in response to that. So it's possible you might owe more on the state side. Um, but the second thing is they have their own rules in terms of what you have to pay to avoid a penalty. There's a lot of correlation between them and the federal rules. They're pretty similar, okay. but not always. And, and the withholding options for state taxes aren't always the same as they are for federal taxes. A lot of uh, IRA custodians or Social Security benefits, for that matter, they can withhold federal taxes, but state tax withholding may be a little trickier. So you want to make sure you've got that state tax covered, if not through withholding, then through estimated payments. Tim, always great to hear your insights. Thanks so much for being here. Thanks, Christine. Thanks for watching. I'm Christine Benz from Morningstar.com.